Hello everybody and welcome back to what I would call a bonus episode of 135th scale figures in review. What I've had to come across my desk um, in the last few months are as a new publication by PLA Publications called Diorama. Okay, and these are the same guys that will produce the Abrams Squad publications that you'll see throughout um, North America, around the world actually. And uh, you can pick some of these up at Sprue Brothers uh, uh, LTD from uh, Liberty, Missouri if you like. But now, why I think this is pretty special is because uh, every now and then, once again, a, a periodical will come across that's not electronic. Uh, it's not something that we download. It's actually a publication that we can have in our hands and thumb through it. And I'm old-fashioned enough that I still appreciate those classic magazines, okay? And these are the two publications we're going to look at today. And I'm a little late on the one, but this is volume one, okay? And this is volume two, okay? These are quarterly publications, once again, from PLA uh, publications, and they are from Valencia, Spain, okay? And what's really neat about these is that they actually pay uh, a, a good credit or a good um, homage, if you will, to the classics, okay? And the classics, to me, are Shep Payne's um, How to Make, uh, How to Build Dioramas, and of course, Francis Verlinden's Verlinden Way, volume number one, okay? And many of us, uh, at one time or another, have seen these, or basically, when we started those years ago, these were basically our Bibles that we looked at when we began uh, putting together our kits, our figures, and our dioramas. Well, in today's world, this is an excellent publication. So we're going to kind of break this down a little bit and take a closer look to see what's in. So hang in there while we get the ball rolling for this episode of 135th Scale Figures in Review, dealing with the new publication, Dioramag. Okay, now we'll go ahead and get this started. And of course, here's your cover, okay? And this is an excellent uh, publication as far as the quality of the of the paper goes, the format that it uses. Okay, it's an oversized uh, magazine, but actually, to be honest with you, these are more like books than they are magazines. And the quality of the paper is outstanding as you go through the whole magazine. And you turn over to the back side, okay? It has the, the same nice, uh, finish on the back. The pages inside are all finished uh, in the same in the same basic way. Okay, as you're looking at them here. Okay, there. And I'm just going to kind of thumb through this just to show you the great quality. Okay, that you have throughout this magazine. All right. Uh, the paper it's, it's in English. Okay, I'm sure there's other editions you can get in different languages. But once again, these are really outstandingly put together and well done. Very professionally finished up. Okay, and now this is the first one I'm going to show you, okay, and this deals with uh, just kind of the intro that it'll, it'll have in the book. Uh, uh, Sven Frischt is um, an editor with this magazine. Uh, Pierre uh, Pellet is the, is the editor-in-chief, and that's obviously where you get the PLA uh, publications coming from, all right? This just kind of shows you a nice introduction. This is, of course, volume one. Okay, and we turn the page, it goes, there's where it pays homage to our, our, uh, our predecessors, the classics. Okay, this is about how Shep Payne's uh, How to Build Dioramas, Volume 1, or this is the second edition, which I also have uh, for me. It goes through a brief explanation of this, very clear, uh, clearly defined table of contents. And once again, now this is Volume 1 as you're going through here. Okay, it kind of shows you just where we've been. Here's one part of the page that pays homage to uh, the Verlinden Way, uh, Volume 1, which is the same one I have right here all those years ago. Okay, and so this is very much set up with, uh, obviously, news that comes out, okay, which would be a typical uh, magazine that comes out with uh, the different things that are available to us. Now, this is mostly a European magazine, when it's, so it comes from Spain. Okay, there's an advertisement for different things coming out, PLA editions. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of thumb through here. And this, once again, as I said, said before, this is a good mix of the classics, okay, as well as the new. This is a, a diorama, uh, Wolf in Sheep's Clothing by Shep Payne all those years ago. Okay, once again, very well done. Okay, and then uh, when you start to get into the more modern uh 
uh, diorama producers and people. This is uh, John Rosengrantz, whose uh, work is, once again, outstanding in its own right. All right. Okay. This article is a how-to or what he went through to put his diorama together. Okay. Throughout this, there's all different kinds of showcases uh, that show you different uh, works by different uh, modelers and diorama makers. Okay. This is Roger Herkman's uh, from the Netherlands. Okay, he has this here, okay, different works for him. This is a more modern one. Here is a how-to uh, that will also have in here very useful information about what you can use, the, the stuff you'll need to make. Okay, this is obviously, once again, still, um, still the first edition as we go through here. Here's another one that shows a ship diorama, small scale. Okay, so they kind of touch on a lot of different things. Here is, uh, just again, some, some workmanship by others. As you see here, here's the an article or a, a kind of a step-by-step -step a little bit about what this gentleman did to make Fury's um, a nice dial okay here's the figures he produced for that okay and they'll feature throughout the different periodicals different modelers specifically okay this is Benhard uh, Lustig okay he's in this one with different works for him I already showed you one Okay, this is a, a ship dio showing a little bit of about a step-by-step -step or how-to. Okay, very clear pictures in English. The paper is 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 classic. Uh, great finish on the on the pictures on the paper. No corners or, or cut here when you're making this. Good images. Okay, and once again, here is uh, one of the Japanese modelers that put put his in. Um, and from my understanding, okay, what they're going to do is during the, because this is a quarterly publication, here's a more modern one by uh, Olav Lund, okay, that's done very, very well. This is, like I say, a brand new. So you have the classics of the past, okay, with some of the new that we have. Here's another modeler that's featured here, his different works. Okay, but they're going to do, and here's a, a Berlin and classic, okay, dealing with, um, North Africa and the venerable Tamaya uh, 88 that still withstood the test of time after all these different years. Okay, so once again, in volume one, is kind of an intro to what's going on. It shows all different kinds. Here's another step by step with to make uh, cobblestone streets. Okay, uh, here's one that shows a nice step by step of how to do windows. Okay, and and it's you know it's just not your average uh, picture book it actually has great images but then also some pretty good uh, and easy to follow step by steps with materials that we can use all the time okay all right so now I'm gonna wrap this up for volume one and then I'm gonna go ahead and show you volume two okay, and I just received this uh, the other day once again where I get these from is Sprue Brothers from uh, Liberty Missouri okay and this is a follow-up. Once again, you have a nice editorial by, by Sven. Does a good job. Once again, the images are very sharp in this magazine. Okay, here's another John Rosengrant classic diorama featuring a panther and some of the figures that he produced and sculpted himself. Okay, as I kind of roll through here, I'll show you. Uh, once again, here's news, uh, different um, items for dioramas that we can pick up because this is focusing on dioramas. Okay, uh, very good. This is a, this is a, very very good article on how to use balsa foam okay and I have a friend of mine Roger Sams who's actually shown us how you can use this to create your own uh, diorama groundwork walls buildings and this is an excellent step-by-step -step about what this gentleman did to create this okay easy to work with as a matter of fact this weekend I'm probably gonna be looking for some of this stuff to see what I can do okay uh, as you move through here once again we'll showcase uh, some dioramas uh, here's a uh, step-by-step -step of showing how you can make some of your own materials okay here's some diorama works by uh, by a gentleman showing different things that he's created okay and here's a great uh airplane diorama of a meg okay this is by a uh, a korean um modeler okay very very good very good step by step sharp images once again the quality of the paper is outstanding and here's another classic all right this is um marian van gills okay uh, which is basically in dutch gotter woman Okay, is the term I believe how you pronounce that but we've seen these before but not quite as sharp of images in a publication as you have here okay this is uh, Benhard Lustig's uh, diorama for the um, for you the war is over 
Okay, and it shows how he produced it, what he did with the model. This is a, a really intricate and detailed step by step. Okay, as we're going through here, he does. It's a it's a pretty long article, but it's very very informative about what he used for his groundwork. Okay, I can't tell you enough. Once again, how how good uh, a, a quality this periodical is. Okay, here's another modeler that showcases some of his works and his dios. Okay. Uh, here's another step-by-step -step that shows you how you can create shattered and broken glass. Okay, very useful. As a matter of fact, in my in my Berlin blog that I'm going to be producing, I'll have to refer back to this. Here's our uh, a Japanese modeler that produces some great quality stuff. Just different images of his work. And like I say, once again, you kind of showcase these, and they'll pick out different uh, different modelers that they'll do this with. This is Ivan uh, Cocker's uh, Prague. 1945 uprising dial which he goes through kind of a step-by-step -step to explain how he did it okay once again images are sharp the text is outstanding the coloring is wonderful okay here's another modeler once again showcasing their different works some of these works you may have seen okay before in different places on the internet but like i said it's outstandingly uh presented here okay this is a classic this is a great dial right here you can look at okay all right, here's a step-by-step -step by Andrew Argent. Okay, this is a fantasy dio that he produced, uh, showing what he did, how he did it, explains a lot uh, a lot of things with the groundwork, explains how he created the water using the AKA uh, uh, resin water kit, all right, that's involved there. And then this one, occurs advertisements, of course, and then this one is by Robert Dopp. Okay, these are classic. Um, uh, this is a showcase again, but these are great uh, little dials that he put forth, okay, back in the day when he was uh, producing these at a regular pace. Still very active today. And now this is a, the images from the Scale Modeling Challenge, which takes place in the Netherlands. All right, modelers from all over Europe will come here. These are, once again, different images that they take from this and put in here. Okay, these are, once again, very good. Here is Roger Herkman's uh, diorama, again, that I've seen uh on the net different places so all in all once again you're looking at just uh different things that this magazine is going to have to offer in future publications okay um once again the quality is done very well i love how they they put a border around and they have the images just sharp a as they can be okay and here's the back of the diorama or the back of the magazine right here okay all in all this is a very hefty double thumbs up on on my uh, review for this uh, new publication that's out by PLA uh, Publications. Okay, and once again, this is volume two that goes right along beside my uh, my nightstand uh, with volume one, and it's called Diorama. Okay, now the uh, this is worth every penny that you're going to spend on this. And once again, I really think more of these as books as opposed to magazines because of the quality that they have and the size that they are. Okay, so. Uh, that's going to wrap up this um, this edition, this bonus edition of 135th Scale Figures in Review. Okay, if you like what you see, uh, leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't yet. Okay, but like I said before, this is these magazines are highly recommended uh, from your average Joe modeler like me because very inspirational and it also has some instructional uh, things, instructional step by steps that are there too. So uh, that's about it from this episode of 135th Scale Figures in Review. Okay, and until next time, folks, we'll see you later.